Hello and welcome to this video. This is part of our AOSCX 10.09 Transfer of Information or TOI. This video we're going to talk about some minor dynamic segmentation enhancements. So that includes both a, a couple enhancements to user-based tunneling and then a, one to virtual network-based tunneling or UBT and VNVT. So let's take a look at some of the new enhancements with user-based tunneling or UBT. First one is the UBT fallback role. And the other is an enhancement to multi-zone in UBT, which allows for multiple zones to be configured in the same VRF. Uh, before 10.9, 10.09, we had a recommendation where you, we did not recommend uh, putting multiple zones in the same VRF. Uh, we supported one zone per VRF. So now we've enhanced that in 10.09 so that we can support multiple zones within the same VRF. So first, let's take a look at the fallback role and discuss that. That utilizes a local role where the switch can, uh, the client can fall back, quote unquote, fall back to a local role in the case that the gateway or cluster, which is a zone, uh, completely fails. So if connectivity to the zone fails, the uh, client can still get some kind of access with the fallback role that might allow some kind of limited access to the network infrastructure until the gateway or cluster can uh, come back online. So there's really only one new command needed to enable it. It's, uh, it's per interface. Uh, so the fallback role supported on the 4100i, 6200, 6300, and 6400 platform. So for multi-zone, that allows, as I mentioned earlier, uh, pre-10.09, we sub only supported one zone per VRF. Uh, there was no CLI restriction, but that was um, an ask from uh, uh, from engineering that we only supported one zone per VRF. So now we've enhanced that with 10.09 so that uh, now we can have multiple zones uh, tunneling within the same VRF. So that eliminates the need to create, having to create all these separate VRFs if you want to run multiple zones from a switch. And so uh, multi-zone supported only on the 6300 and 6400 platforms. So we gave an overview of the fallback role. Really the maximum number of fallback roles per port is one. So it's configured by the interface. And you know, it's really dependent on the max roles per system, which uh, is a thousand, about a thousand for 6,400, 6,300, 64 for the 6,200, and 32 for the 4,100i. Uh, in reality, really the max fallback roles you're going to probably configure on a switch, on a standalone switch is, you know, 24 or 48. Depending on the port count uh, in a stack, you would be limited to the number of total roles in the system. Uh, ideally, you know, if you got a 10 member stack for a 6300, 48 ports, uh, you can have up to, I guess, 480 fallback rolls per stack. Uh, I, I doubt that would, you know, usually the fallback roll is going to be, uh, you know, one or two rolls uh, that'll be uniform so you don't have to configure so many user roles. But uh, that's the idea with the fallback role. You just configure once per port, so all the clients on that port that would be tunneled to different roles, they would all get the same fallback role. And that would be be applied to those uh, those clients. Uh, one caveat with it, with the fallback role, the user VLAN. So if you're using the VLAN extend mode, where the VLAN has to exist on the switch, uh, so say your VLAN's 15, that VLAN could not be cannot be part of the uplink to the gateway when using the VLAN extend mode or UBT.10, UBT1.0. Uh, you'll have MAC address moves in the same on the same link and um, you know it could cause issues with that. So that's why we uh, we say uh, you know make sure you have a separate VLAN from the, the uplink. Uh, so if you have VLAN 15 maybe your your manage your management VLAN or your data VLAN that goes that uh, has connectivity from the switch to the gateway is VLAN 20. So you would keep those separate that makes sense. So how we configure the fallback roles, first we need to make sure that the user role is configured. So we use the port access role command and then we give it a VLAN. Um, 
the new command to allow the fallback roles in bold here, which is port access ubt dash fallback dash role, and then you just give the role name. And so that uh, automatically configures the switch for the fallback role for ubt clients in the case that the uh, gateway or cluster goes down and the client's unable to reach, uh, you know, maintain the control plane tunnel between the switch and the gateway or cluster. So then from the client table, uh, the fallback role can be seen as applied when we lose connectivity to the gateway. So here I had uh, two roles, one UBT fallback, one UBT fallback two. So I, uh, you know, I disconnected my gateway from my infrastructure and then so that the switch was unable to reach it and the fallback roles were applied to that client. Fallback role was applied to that client. So that was how to configure the fallback role. This is a little chart that shows uh, the different times or, or uh, instances where the fallback role might, may or may not be applied. So if the zone isn't ready or down, the fallback role will be applied. If the zone's up, uh, the fallback role won't be applied. If the gateway is not reachable and it's down, fallback role will be applied. If it's reachable and it's up, fallback role will not be applied. If the UBT profile is disabled or down, uh, the fallback role will be applied. If the profile is enabled and up, fallback role will not be applied. applied. Uh, if it's down due to a management module or a VSF switchover, uh, fallback role will be applied. Uh, during the switchover, there might be an instance where the uh, gateways might lose connectivity. So anytime that happens, the fallback role will be applied if configured. So multi-zone, we covered it, uh, I believe, in the 10.7 TOI. Um, not a whole lot of difference here. The only difference is that uh, we can now support up to eight zones in a VRF. Uh, so the maximum total number of zones that can be supported on the switch or the stack is eight. Uh, so the new enhancement in AOSC X 10.09 is that we can support eight if we wanted to configure all the zones in one VRF. Uh, the max zones that could be configured is eight per VRF. So, you know, as uh, the rest of the scale, total number of tunneled clients across the different zones, the max is uh, 1,017 per system, which is switch, standalone switch or stack. Um, caveats, uh, basically the same caveats that are that go with multi-zone. Uh, any overlapping user role VLAN should not be present across zones on the same switch. Uh, that could lead to cross-zone traffic. So you might want to make sure that you're using uh, different VLANs for the clients across the multiple zones. And uh, multi-zone is only uh, supported for the 6300 and 6400 switch series. All right, so let's take a quick look here at a demo with the new user-based tunneling enhancements. So first, let's take a look at the uh, fallback role. So here I have some traffic running on my Ixia traffic generator. Uh, those are running over tunneled clients. Uh, if I go to my switch here, I can do a show port access client. I can see all my clients here. I've got contractors and employees that are all receiving a downloadable user role. I can do a show UBT user all and see that the tunnels are all up and activated. Uh, if a if I do a show run, I can see my UBT fallback role has been configured. Uh, so I have one that's fallback one, well fallback and fallback two. Uh, so one of those should get applied. And if I go to my port, uh, I don't have it configured on my port. What we can do, we can configure it on the port. So we do port access. Uh, oh, I gotta go to uh, interface and then I can do port access and then UBT fallback role. And we'll do the uh, first one, UBT fallback. We click enter. 
Now if we do a show run current, uh, we can see that the fallback role has been now been configured. And so from here, we have our traffic flowing. And then what we can do, actually, let me open up, need to open up a console to the switch. Eh, you know what, we'll just uh, take it down from, from our my core switch here. Uh, I have my 7205s. So we'll just take both ports down. Disable and then R7010. Disable. So now the gateway should not be reachable. Should be able to do a show UBT state. Yeah, so that's gone now. And if we do a show port access clients, we can see the UBT fallback role has been applied and it says, hey, this is UBT fallback role. So, you know, if it was named, uh, um, I don't know, backup role or something, uh, the UBT fallback here is proclaiming that this is the UBT fallback role that it is currently being applied to the port. So that's how UBT fallback works. Now let's go ahead and let me re-enable these ports back up because I'll need them. And then once you re-enable your gateways, uh, it should re-register. And then all your tunnel clients come back up as the gateways come back up. Looks like I just have one gateway up so far. Yeah, it might take a, take a little bit. Uh, anyway, so yeah, I don't know why my other Gateway's not coming up. Must be a uh, timing out there. Probably the traffic. Um, the other thing is we. I also have another zone configured, so I have another gateway configured as well. So I have the second zone here and uh, corporate zone. Uh, and if I do a show UBT, we can see that they are configured both in the default VRF. So that's. The difference with multi-zone, the multi-zone enhancement with a with uh, AOSCX 10.09 is I can have multiple zones, multiple gateways um, in the same VRF, so I don't have to configure a one-to-one -one mapping between zone and VRF uh, like we did previous to 10.9. So that that's what's new. That's the new enhancements for UBT in 10.9. Thank you very much. Well, let's take a look at some of the VNBT enhancements. Uh, one of the, well, it's not really enhancements, an enhancement. Uh, we'll look at the uh, reserve GBP ID for infrastructure traffic. So on AOS CX 10.08, is that when, that is when we introduce group-based policy or GBP. And uh, if you remember all default traffic that didn't have a role to ID mapping applied to it, uh, would receive the ID of zero. So now with uh, AOSCX 10.09, there's a new built-in role for any CPU-generated infrastructure traffic like ARP, DHCP relay, ping, and that's called infra. So uh, before 10.09, uh, all that infrastructure traffic would be marked with the default role and have an ID of zero. So Infra has a default ID of two and you can change it. So user, it's user changeable. So there's a new command added, uh, GBP role Infra, and then you can set the Infra role ID to anything between one and 8,191. And as, as I mentioned earlier, default is two. So for an example, packet capture, um, I was running traffic. I sent a uh, ARP request uh, to one of my tunneled clients. And from that request, when I captured the packet, as we can see with an orange arrows pointing, that that received a group policy ID of two. And we can see down below that it is an ARP reply packet uh, indicated by the address res resolution protocol uh, reply in parentheses there. So that it's just a real simple uh, 
simple way of map matching IDs. If you need to troubleshoot, you can go in and tell what kind of traffic it is, but at least you know that type of traffic um, will get a default as a reserved um, default a reserved ID for the default infrastructure traffic that is uh, CPU generated. So some of the caveats with the reserved uh, GBP ID for infrastructure uh, is that all the CPU generated control packets, so anything CPU transmitting, so like a packet transmitted from the CPU to a port must be transmitted from an SVI and not from a routed port to be placed in automatically into the infra role. So any CPU re-forwarded packets will still get the default role. So packets like DHCP snooping, uh, v4, v6, captive portal, ND snooping, RA guard, IGMP, MLD, and MDNS, anything that, you know, multicast that might have to get re-forwarded by the CPU, that kind of traffic will get the default role. So the same infra role to ID mapping also must be consistent across the tunnel path. So by default, everything's in two. Uh, across all the switches that that traffic might go to, um, that ID mapping, if you change it to 100, that has to be consistent across the tunnel path. Uh, so GBP, of course, is only supported on the CX, Aruba CX 6300 and 6400 switch platforms. 